Carper, who joins us from Westminster this morning. A, a very good morning to you. Uh, a tough job for you today, trying to sell this strike or explain this strike, at least, uh, to the working public. A lot of people will think that Mick Lynch is, frank, frankly, making, making a fool of you. No, not at all. Well, look, we've been very clear. When I took this job, I was very clear I wanted to do uh, my part in trying to make sure we could get a fair and reasonable offer that's been put forward. Uh, and that's exactly what's happened. So all of the um, rail employees have had a fair and reasonable offer, which I think your viewers will look at and think is very reasonable. Uh, one of the unions accepted that offer, so Unite Workers have accepted it. The TSSA have recommended acceptance and will get their ballot result later this week. Uh, but the RMT have refused to do so. And I would call on them to look again at this offer and, uh, and accept it. And it's interesting, in their ballot yesterday, only just over half of their workforce actually rejected it. Um, uh, almost 40% of their workforce, even with a very clear instruction from their union leadership, actually voted in favour of it. So I think the tide is turning on people seeing that the offers we've made are reasonable, taking into account both the travelling public but also the interests of taxpayers. Well, Mr Barclay, um, earlier this morning we had former RMT General Secretary Steve Headley on here and we put it to him that this wasn't about the public, it wasn't even about pay, it's about politics. And he basically laughed and tended to agree. This is actually about trying to inflict maximum damage on the Tory party at Christmas Centre, how with the public? Well, look, that, that might be what... Uh, I don't know what the union's motivations are, but um, all I can say is they've had a reasonable offer. I think most people would consider it was reasonable. Uh, we obviously want to make sure we can deliver reform. That is also important for getting a sustainable railway. The railway's had a significant amount of taxpayer support over the last few years. And I think most people have considered they've had a reasonable offer, uh, and I hope very much they accept it. The damage is done for this week, the strikes are taking place, and even if they were called off, damage has been inflicted on the hospitality industry, on people wanting to get to work, key workers, um, and it's completely unnecessary. People have had a reasonable deal. Uh, I made sure that there was a reasonable deal for the trade unions to consider. Some have accepted it, um, and I think it's time the RNT reconsidered, uh, went back to the negotiating table uh, and accepted the very fair offer that's on the table. Well, Secretary of State, I think that's the fourth or fifth time you've used the word reasonable, and we've certainly heard it being used by Rishi Sunak. It's certainly the message the government wants to push out. And yet yesterday, uh, when the Royal College of Nursing were invited to sit down with the Secretary of State for Health, uh, they came out describing him as belligerent, refusing to even discuss pay. Now, that doesn't sound like a good way to deal with this crisis, does it? Especially when you have a COBRA meeting, we've got Oliver Dowden coming out and saying ministers are straining every sinew. It sounds like Steve Barclay's just sitting down offering tea. That's not very reasonable. Not at all. The Health Secretary uh, yet again yesterday met the uh, Royal College of Nursing. He's done that on a number of occasions. He listened very carefully uh, to their arguments uh, on a range of issues, but he also made it very clear that, there's, that in the health service there's an independent pay review. Body, yes, and that advice was given the before the cost of pay. And if the I government, may interject. And we've. Of if course. I may interject, that, that advice from the Independent Pay Review Board was set before the war in Ukraine, the huge extortionate cost of living crisis that is affecting some of the worst paid in our society, who are our nurses. Well, we've, first of all, we've accepted all of the independent pay review body uh, offers, but also the thing you just mentioned there about the huge pressure, quite rightly, on people from uh, energy prices, that's why the government, quite rightly, came forward with a very significant package of support, which is going to everybody in the country to help them with energy prices. We know that families are finding it difficult to cope with energy prices. That's why there's direct help off of people's bills on top of the money that went directly to families. And for those people who are on lower incomes, there's further help and extra help for pensioners. So I accept that dealing with energy prices as a result of Putin's war in Ukraine is very difficult for people. But that's why the government's put forward a huge amount of support from the taxpayer to help those who are least well off. Uh, and